<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome to your latest Chelsea news. We have to actually now sit down and have a serious conversation in regards to Reese James because it's it's getting to the point where it's getting ridiculous now. Few points that I want to touch base on in regards to this particular matter. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the latest in the last 24 hours in terms of news, Chelsea news that's been dropping. There's news in regards to Reese James. There's news in regards to Jaden Sancho. There's bits and pieces in regards to other players as well. So we're going to talk about all of it. But first up, ladies and gentlemen, Nizar Kinsella. He states, Reese James remains out with a hamstring injury with no sign of an imminent return. No sign of an imminent return is pretty huge. Reese James is coming from Jack Rossa. Reese James has suffered a delay to his long anticipated return for Chelsea. The defender's latest hamstring injury has not healed as well as expected. Very, very concerning, ladies and gentlemen. More on Reese James. Insiders at Chelsea insist there has been no setback or fresh new injury to the affected muscle, simply that the area concern has not recovered as quickly as they would like. They are also adamant James will not be rushed back. Now, whew, there's a lot to take in there. Bottom line is, this guy is now not recovering quickly enough. The issue was already bad. Now it's got to the point where the recovery is not quick enough. And what is the guarantee that once he's fully recovered, how many matches are we going to get from him? So a few things I want to talk about. Number one, this guy is Chelsea Football Club's captain. And to not have him around in the squad is detrimental to the squad. This squad is screaming out for a captain, screaming out for a leader, but the leader is nowhere to be seen. Now, this isn't his fault. He's not doing it purposely. I've seen previously comments stating, Miss, what's he meant to do? He's not doing this purposely. Now, of course, he's not doing this purposely, but it is a detriment to the football club. We need to seriously think about what benefit does it give us by having someone like Rhys James. As I said, number one, captain. We don't seem to have a captain for the club. Everyone is taking turns. Someday it's Moses Caicedo. Someday it's Enzo Fernandez. Someday some people are saying maybe give it to Levi Colwell, who was doing the, um, you know, the team talk in the huddle prior to the match starting against Bournemouth. Last season, it was Conor Gallagher. This bits and pieces, it's not going to cut it. It's simply not going to cut it. So captaincy is an issue for the football club. Number two, right-sided player. Right-sided player has become a major issue for us because Marlo Gusto himself is also injured quite regularly. Now, we've got some news in regards to Marlo Gusto coming up very soon that he is back into training. However, he's an out-and-out -out fullback, right? Reese James, I don't know whether he can play fullback anymore. Either he has to play as an RCB if we play in a back three or sometimes he has to invert. If he does play as a right-back, play in midfield, I'm not really sure whether Reese James has the legs to go up and down the channel anymore. So that right-sided situation. Against Bournemouth, we had to use Axel Dessas. Now, Reese James could have been perfect as an RCB. We don't have that option either. So not only the captain's not there, but the right-sided player is not there. Third issue, he's on big wages, you know. He's actually on big wages. He's on like 250k a week, something like that, close to that. What is he giving in terms of the 250k? We talk about players in our football club that are earning a lot of money and not doing much. Well, here's another one. I don't remember the last time Rhys James has played like three games in a row, to be honest. I don't remember it. I don't even remember when was the last time he played 50% of the season. And now this season, we were saying to ourselves that Oh, you know what? He's suspended for the first few matches. No problems. He's going to come back and he's going to be ready to go. Well, not only he didn't play the first few matches because he was suspended, but he was also injured. And now he's already missed four matches in the Premier League. He's about to miss the fifth one. And let's be honest, his performance in the preseason wasn't that great either. 
So by the time he does start training, don't even worry about the game. Game is probably a while away. By the time he starts training, when are we going to get 100% Reese James who can actually start featuring in the games? So ladies and gentlemen, for me, lots of issues with Reese James. As I've stated, wages, captaincy, right-sided problem, and of course, the availability is not there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. For me, honestly speaking, if we don't get 50% of Freeze James this season, at least bare minimum 50%, then I'm sorry. I think we'll need to call it a wraps. We need to put him up in the market and see if, if anyone is capable of taking him. Maybe he needs to go to a particular club where there isn't any pressure to come back and lead Chelsea Football Club because there will genuinely be pressure on him, being the captain, being frustrated. Maybe he just needs to needs to focus on just recovering and maybe playing at a club where the demands are a bit lower. And that's the other thing. Do we strip off the captaincy of him? What's the point of keeping someone as a captain who is not going to be captaining the team most of the time? So ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Next up, Jaden Sancho was not involved in Chelsea training. I swear, when I saw that first line, I was like, oh my God, don't tell me Jaden Sancho is injured. However, ladies and gentlemen, he's not. So hold your horses. Uh, it was not involved in Chelsea training outdoors today, but had no concerns as he was working indoors in recovery session. He is still building towards full fitness. So look, whether he starts against West Ham, now it's a bit of a question mark. Seems like he's still recuperating. He's still slowly just managing his fitness back. He looked lively against Bournemouth in the second half. Now, if he can at least give us 45 minutes, that would be fantastic. We need him badly. Against West Ham, we need that bit of X factor, and this guy is going to give us that X factor. And I cannot imagine not utilizing Jaden Sancho at all. If he's somewhat fit, at least I need 45 minutes. If not, I would actually like him to start and play 70, 80 minutes if possible. So look, we've got the entire week of training, of getting you know the players into peak physical condition. So let's see what happens against West Ham. I need this player to play because honestly, Mudrik is not an option at the moment. And Pedro Neto, yes, can definitely be an option on the left, but I do want to start seeing Pedro Neto on the right side. Maresca has been impressed by Sancho's attitude, who state that he has already made real impression at Cobham including arriving at training earlier than scheduled in the first week and talk, taking his time to introduce himself to training ground staff. So that, that's good. You know, when you're in a new club and he states that he's back home, it's good to show that good attitude, good behavior, you know, that's going to set you apart. That's going to give you that good impression with your teammates and the manager and everyone that's, you know, in the backroom staff, all the personnel involved not just in terms of the game but outside of the game as well everyone else that's involved within the club so this is good this is very very good from Jaden Sancho hopefully he can continue this hopefully we can keep a good environment for him you know people say that well Mariska was the one that say, said post post match against Bournemouth that he's a type of player that needs a bit of love and I've said it in all you can eat Chelsea if you guys have missed that episode do check that out the latest episode of all you can eat uh, all you can eat Chelsea on Matisse's channel I've said it that there's nothing wrong in giving certain players some love if that's how they tick if that's how we can get the best out of them by all means let's let's show them love there, there's no you know, not everyone operates autonomously you know you don't need to show me any love I'm just gonna go out there and do business there are certain individuals that that need something different, more than the monetary side of things. They just need to feel important. And this is the task of Enzo Maresca to understand how each player operates and to hone in on their on that particular aspect to try and get the best out of them. So let's see what happens. But looks like Enzo Maresca so far is very impressed. Jaden Sancho has impressed Enzo Maresca with his attitude as he has given him a clean slate to get back to his best in the Premier League. This is coming from Ben Jacobs. This is pretty much what I just said a moment ago. 
So good news, good news, good feels in regards to Jaden Sancho. Hopefully it continues. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Marlo Gusto and Romeo Lavia back in training. Great, great news. Romeo Lavia, is he going to be able to start against West Ham? I don't think so, but if he can get some sort of minutes, this is another issue, man. I mean, it's not, it's not a good start for Romeo Lavia, who's been lively. He's been one of our best midfielder, if not the best midfielder. But once again, he's he's missed out on a lot of football already. The season is young and he's already missed out on a lot of football on top of all the football that he missed last season. I don't expect him to just waltz back into the team against West Ham, not playing the past God knows how many matches, four or five matches, right? Three or four matches. I don't expect him to just waltz back. But of course, when he's back into full fitness, I expect him to start. So let's see what happens against West Ham. Marlo Gusta potentially might start because he's only missed one game, which was against um Bournemouth prior to that he did feature against Crystal Palace we do need a fullback uh, Axel Desasi is absolutely a no-go so it's a good news that Marlo Gusto is back whether we play with Marlo Gusto that'll be interesting to see or do we go with the back three of Tosin as a center center back Wesley Fofana as the RCB and Wes, uh Liva Kowal as the LCB and that means there's no spot for Marlo Gusto but we shall see how Enzo Mariska you know, squares up against West Ham. Uh, Marla Gusta, definitely someone um, I rate a lot. So let's see what happens. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Estevar William. Oh, before we start with Estevar William, Enzo Fernandez is back as well, ladies and gentlemen. And this is another conundrum. This is another conundrum. How do we set up in midfield? Renato Viga in the second half was actually quite good. We need to win duels. We need to win the second ball. We cannot have a player that is not going to be able to do that off the ball. And Enzo Fernandez, whenever he's been playing, he's been pushed up front a little bit because the left-sided fullback seems to invert, which then pushes Enzo Fernandez further up. So is Enzo Fernandez as, as effective further up? Is he effective much deeper? But if he is deeper, can he do all the off-the-ball work rate? It's a conundrum. It is definitely a conundrum, one to think about against West Ham. But all three of these players, ladies and gentlemen, they're back. Romeo Lavia, Marla Gusto, and Enzo Fernandez are back training. Next up, Estevar William has equaled Neymar's goal and assist in the Brasileiro uh, at 17 years old. Estevar William in 2024, nine goals, seven assists. Neymar in 2009, when he was 17, 10 goals, six assists. This is, look, this is not a joke anymore. Estava Willian will definitely find it hard initially in the Premier League because it's it's far more physical, far more rapid. And your mentality needs to be on point. However, there is a serious player in Estava Willian. When you can match what Neymar was doing at that age, and we all know what Neymar got to later on in his season with Barcelona and whatnot, Estevar William, this is one serious, serious level of footballer for us. And once again, kudos to our scouts to be able to unearth such a special talent. Estevar William is special. This is what they think at Chelsea. And that's why they interest invested important money in him. The value of the player is growing and they wait for him in 2025. They are closely monitoring all his performances. 100%. Before players like Estevar William and Kendry Pies even joined Chelsea Football Club, their price have increased immensely. Add another 20 to 30 million on top of what we've purchased them for. At least 20. I know Estevar William would bought him for quite, quite an expensive sum, but you can add potentially another 15 to 20. Kendry Paez, I think we bought him for about 20 odd, 25 odd million. He's probably 50 million right now. Kendry Paez is an Ecuadorian international player. He plays for the national team, first team. Estava William just got his debut as well in the last international break for the first, you know, the, the, the senior team. So these are serious level players. Part of the add-ons in the contract of William Estava to Chelsea are, to, are for the performances of William Estava at Palmeiras this season. So every goal and assist is more money Chelsea have to pay to Palmeiras. So I guess this is why they're playing him a lot. This is why, um, you know, every goal is being celebrated by Palmeiras and assists as well. 
Uh, maybe calm it down a little bit, uh, you know, Estaval. We don't want to fork out too much money, but no, look, go out then absolutely kill it. Make Chelsea pay for your talent. Chelsea are happy with this development, which is fantastic. Let's see if there's any other latest news that has popped off since we started recording, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, that is the latest. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to Reese James. That is the biggest topic at the moment. We need to have serious, serious levels of conversation in regards to him. Let me know in regards to Jaden Sancho, how you feel about him. Do you think he should be starting against West Ham? Romeo Lavia, Marlo Gusto, Enzo Fernandez, the conundrum that is with all of those players, and of course, Esteval William. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall actually see you guys, God willing, inshallah, uh, for the Champions League match. AC Milan versus... Chelsea Football, uh, AC Milan versus Chelsea Football Club. I wish it was Chelsea in the Champions League. AC Milan versus Liverpool. We shall see you guys there. Lots of Chelsea, ex-Chelsea players there in AC Milan. I could probably call it AC Chelsea. So um, we shall be there. So make sure you're there for that. Until next time, everyone. Take care. See ya. Goodbye.